Yo, it's Two Side Anime here, and Chapter Seven of Boruto Two Blue Vortex has officially dropped, and we have a lot to talk about. So this chapter that I want to discuss today with you guys, I'm gonna be very honest. I really didn't care for Miski versus Boruto because I knew the fight was gonna be one-sided, but the fight solidified one thing that Boruto is currently the strongest character of the verse and it's up to the God Tree clones to actually replace him. Hear me out, I'm excited for the God Tree clones to do their thing and have their impact on the story, but I really don't think they're strong enough to defeat Boruto. And I know you guys are gonna bring up that chapter when they tried to jump Boruto, but he was in base the entire time and he was still holding his own. So we're just gonna have to see. Move on to the plot points that I wanna discuss with you guys today from chapter seven. First one is Miski reverting back to his old self and the reason why. The second, Boruto's death is kind of confirmed at this point. The third, I was right about omnipotence. And the fourth one, Hidari and Sasuke's return. Kick it off with the Miski plot point. Because Miski's son was replaced with Kawaki, Miski reverted back to his old self that we were originally introduced to in part one. Boruto. We were first introduced to Miski in part 1 Boruto. It took both Sarada and Boruto to help Miski find his own identity and become a better person. Miski was first introduced in the academy arc in the anime. He almost caught his first body. But after that, Boruto became something like Miski's moral compass to help him down his journey of finding his own identity. And he became the loving person that we knew before the swap. After seven, the conversation between Boruto and Miski and Boruto constantly telling Miski to find his own identity was a nice callback to the anime because we saw Miski's growth as a character and he finally broke away from Boruto being the center of his life he even adopted a cat. The anime, and specifically in the anime, because in the manga it was different. Miski told Boruto that he's gonna go on that mission with Sarada regardless if he goes or not because he's his own person. Remember, this happened right before Boruto accepted the mission to deliver the scientific ninja tech with Kakasuke that led to the, to the Owl art. Miski reverted back to his old self because of Kalwaki's code and callous personality. You know that saying that misery loves company or how people say stay away from negative people because that one negative person can have a great influence on your perspective on life. Look at how Kawaki massacred my boy. But outside of that, the fight was pretty one-sided. And the whole time Miski was fighting Boruto, that man was getting cooked. He was thinking to himself, I'm getting cooked. The fandom is going to boo me and I know you guys don't want to hear this. And I kind of went over this in my other video, The Tragic Story, but this chapter gave us another Boruto death flag. And if you guys have been paying attention, we've gotten three Boruto death flags in the last couple chapters. The first death flag was on chapter three, page 38. Kawaki looks at Boruto and says, if you've come to die at home, I'll help you right here, right now. And Boruto answers, dying in Konoha doesn't sound bad, but not today. Flag was in chapter six when Boruto was flying in the air. He said, I swear to rescue Master Sasuke and everyone else who's turned in the tree as well as he pauses and he says, no, never mind, I'll be back. Like he's trying to convince himself like he's going to come back to the village. Unsure of his own fate in the grand scheme of things. And lastly, the newest death flag in chapter seven. Miski says, all this destruction is your fault. Do us a favor and disappear from this world. Boruto was like, maybe you're right, but unfortunately, I still have a lot of things to do. That's why I would not fall in this place. Off that statement, I feel like Boruto has accepted his fate that at the end of the series, he's going to die. That the only way the world will be able to move on is with his death. Shows you how much omnipotence has deteriorated Boruto's mental state but it's not just omnipotence that's deteriorating Boruto it's because his mind is in sync with Momoshiki. Momoshiki has the ability of future sight. Whenever he peeps into the future, Boruto will see the events that unfolds in Momoshiki's ability. This means Boruto knows how the series is going to end. Boruto using Momoshiki's future sight 
was displayed all in chapter four of Two Blue Vortex. Berto's whole mission to find the God Tree clone was based off Future Sight. You have to go back and pay attention with the conversation Borto was having with the Toads and with KK after he failed his mission. In their conversations, you can tell Borto foresaw all the events that took place. They were attempting to get the upper hand, but failed because the God Tree clones pulled up. After the Sasuke God Tree clone appeared, the Toad tells Boruto, what are you doing? Our surprise attack failed. You need to leave now. The surprise attack that Boruto attempted to launch on the God Tree itself was based off of the events that he saw with Momoshiki's future site. If that isn't enough proof for you, let's move on to the conversation he had with Cash and Koji after he failed his mission. Right after Cash and Koji scolded Boruto for being irrational, he continues and goes on and says, I'm not trying to console you but you knew there was a high chance of this happening and it doesn't really change anything. We still must fight. This means Boruto and Cash and Koji already knew there was a possibility of the arrival of the God Tree clones and they were attempting to destroy the God Tree itself before this happened. The only way they will know about these events is with Momoshiki's future site. All these death flags is definitely not looking good for our boy Boruto. Time for my flowers again. At the beginning of the video, I said there was another plot point that took place in Chapter 7, Two Blue Vortex that proved that one of my theories were correct. And this theory was explained in the Tragic Fate of Boruto video. I explained that Omnipotence cannot be reversed. And the only person that can reverse Omnipotence will be Shibai himself. For me, I don't want Omnipotence to be reversed. It keeps the tension in the story and gives Boruto a kind of tragic vibe going down as the nameless shinobi that's going to end up saving the world. In this chapter, Boruto explains that omnipotence is irreversible, meaning everybody's memories that were altered by Ida will stay the same for the rest of the series. I said in my tragic fate video, I feel sorry for anybody that thinks Boruto's going to have a happy ending. Boruto is literally living Itachi's life. And finally, let's talk about Hidari and Sasuke's return. In the final panels of the chapter, we see Juro, forgive me if I'm saying his name wrong, reading a bunch of books looking for answers, launch a successful attack on Naruto Uzumaki. In one of the panels, we see Hidari looking quiet, deep in thought, like he's thinking about backdooring every god tree clone in the vicinity. I'm telling you guys right now, Hidari is going to betray Juro after facing off against Sarada because the memories in his genes are going to over flood his mind and he's going to remember the path Sasuke walked as the Shadow Kage dedicated his whole life atoning for his sins and protecting the Leaf Village. Those memories are ingrained deep into his genes. Now Juro is going to try to kill Naruto, his soul brother. There's no way Hidari is going to remain on his side. His name means left arm so that means Sasuke is going to get a new arm and a new Renegon so I can't wait my glorious king is coming back that's it for this chapter review video let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'm out